Hi, I'm Sandy Genovese, and we are making a three-dimensional display, a diorama, if you will, today. And I'm making it for my dad, who has a birthday this summer, because I found all these cool photos. I haven't completely assembled it because I wanted to talk to you a little bit about it. But when you look here, here is my sister and brother and I. She hates this photo because of <laughs> the... Um, bathing cap that she's wearing um, but it cracks me up and I mean I don't look great either but who cares that's what we look like and then here's like if I go back to all the way to this layer you can see here is my dad my brother had not even learned how to swim yet Crestline is where I learned how to swim so this is all great memories and this is going to be part of what I'm giving him for his birthday I want you to see that the way that a diorama works is by the graduating lengths of the layers. So let's talk about dimensions. This top layer is seven and a fourth wide by nine and three fourths long. And we're gonna talk about the window later. The back layer is once again, seven and a fourth tall and 12 inches long, if I turn it over. So seven and a fourth by 12. These inside dimensions it's really up to you. It's just that this one needs to be a little longer and this one needs to be a little longer. The lengths need to graduate so that you get a little bit of dimension in each layer. Then we're going to go back and we're going to see how to create all these different things. You want to make sure that you place the photos and the die cuts in such a way that they show through the windows the way you want. And probably the way to best explain that, I've already punched the holes. So I'm gonna go ahead and place a brad. You can see that I've got it in here. And then I'm going to just pull these layers and the pulling them is gonna to start to create the bowing of the paper, which really gives you the dimensionality. And then once I get it to the back, I'm gonna open those prongs up and I'm going to do the same thing. Although notice with the top, it's only the front and the back layer because the two inside layers are not so tall that they even attach to the top. So I'll flip this over so you can see. I'm gonna do the same thing. Just open up the prongs on that brad. So how cool is that to be able to see all the dimensionality um, and all of us as we looked lots and lots and lots of years ago. All right, in order to make this, we talked about the dimensions of the layers. Let's talk first about the window itself. What I did, and I'll just bring all these pieces up, is I took a three and a quarter by five and an eighth, I cut that rectangle out and I set it so that it was generally in the middle, but I, I wanted a narrow strip at the bottom because I want lots of space for you to look in and see. So whether you use your X-Acto knife or whether you use your trimmer, you're going to cut out this window. The next layer is done by tearing. So remember it's graduated in length but also needs to be graduated in height so that each of the layer behind and the, and the one behind that will show. So I'm going to just tear. I've just taken a piece of sand colored paper. The, the key to tearing is if you want a really smooth tear, tear with the grain. If you want a really bumpy tear, this one's pretty smooth, so I'm going with the grain. If you want it really up and down, then go against the grain. So I've created the tearing for this second layer. The third layer is actually the waves, and I haven't stuck this down yet so I could show you. I used a die cut of a wave border, but it wasn't tall enough to really show behind this the strip and to have room for everything I wanted in the previous layers. So I just took a piece of the same colored paper and I left it so you could see I'm just going to add some extra height by gluing an extension on the bottom and that's going to give me this taller wave border. The other thing is in order to add white caps what I've done is I've taken and I'm going to move this out of the way in case my thing goes. I've just drawn with a, a white pen I've drawn it on and I'm coloring them in just with the white pen. You can go back 
if it's a die cut, which this was, and cut it out of white as well as out of blue, and then cut the white cap off and attach it right over the top. The only problem with that is you can see how little this is. Sometimes trying to put adhesive on something little like that is more trouble than it takes to just stop and color in with a white pen. You can even use a white crayon, a white pencil, because they'll all look different and each has its own, you know, the benefits so that they look kind of like frothy white caps. So you can see I've colored one. I still have one more to color, but that I don't need to color all of them for you to understand how this works. The back one is just a solid paper. So layering them back up, you can see I've got these various layers that are going to sit like this. I need a way for them to attach. Now you can do it quickly and easily with a stapler, but I like when I'm not having it on display for it to lie flat. So and I don't want all the holes that stapling is going to make. So I'm going to punch permanent holes that are, will be covered up with brads. So if you look closely, you can see in the corners, I've just drawn little holes where I'm going to put I'm using an eighth inch hole punch where I'm going to punch a hole. You don't want to be too close to the edge because the brad has prongs on it and you don't want the prongs of the brad to stick out. So come in far enough that your prongs have some place to hide behind. So I'll just keep moving this around so I can punch all of the holes in all four, roughly in all four corners of this display. So once you have the front with all the holes in it, now these holes will be your guides for where to place the holes for all the successive layers. For this side, I'm going to lay this down. I'll do one layer at a time so you can see. I'm going to, I want the texture of the paper that looks kind of like sand. So when these edges are lined up, I'm going to place where I want this hole. And when these edges are lined up, I know it's two shades of blue, so it might not be obvious, but I'm going to draw the hole. And then when these corners are lined up, I'll draw that hole. This one I'm going to have need the hole at the top as well. So let me also put the hole at the top. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the other end. I'll start at, with the yellow on the back. I'm going to put that hole, oops, <laughs> and the bottom hole. And then I'll mark when these corners are aligned. It tells me where to put this one. And do the same thing when the corners are aligned. It will tell me where to place this hole. So now that I've marked where all the holes go, let's just stop, take a minute, and punch all those little guys. Okay, so now that all the holes are punched, it's time to do the assembly. So if you look at the finished one, you can see that the assembly really consists of layering in the, the themed embellishments, whether you hand make them, whether you buy them, whether you die cut them, whether they're stickers, basically whatever the elements are going to be to create the theme. And then we're going to also layer in the photos. And periodically, I'll usually use paper clips to hold it so that as I lay something down, I can look through the window and see, is that, are those photos placed where I can see everything or do I need to raise it up or move it to the right or move it to the left? You'll play with it as you're layering them in. Let's go ahead and, and I'll place a few. If you look down here, I thought I would show you kind of the ABCs of layering die cuts. If you look at the palm tree, you can see that I've added different layers. All I did was cut two shades of green and two shades of brown and then trimmed away different parts of the top layers so that the bottom layers would show through. So by having the lime green on the top and the darker green underneath, every place I cut out of the top is going to allow the green that's darker to show through. I did the same thing with adding texture to the trunk of the palm tree. Out of the top layer, I cut notches so that when I layer it back on top of the darker brown, 
the darker brown will show through and it gives you that texture. I used circle punches and added a white pin, some dimensionality, just some texture, and that will give you the palm tree. For the umbrella, notice that the umbrella really looks like a rain umbrella and I think it does that because of the handle. So what I did was I layered the two colors together. So if I turn it over, you'll see it's just cut out of a red and an orange and then I use the orange to cut out the details so that I can layer them up and I trim off that handle and I'm going instead to substitute. If I bring this in you'll see how well this is going to work. When you put a wooden handle now suddenly it's going to look like a beach umbrella. You're going to add all of the details to all the various die cuts and let me just place I'll go ahead and I'll put adhesive. You need to figure out if the palm tree is going to go in this corner, depending on how high or how low you're going to place it. Figuring out, okay, I'm going to want adhesive behind the stem. I don't want adhesive on just these couple of leaves because I don't want anything to stick. So I'm going to avoid these two and then just put adhesive roughly in the other places. Remember, you're probably going to put more adhesive than I am. And I'm going to go ahead and place this so that I'd like how it looks when it sort of softens the hard edge of that window. So you can see I've got that. I would do the same thing adding in these other die cut elements, the umbrella, the pail, and without the shovel. There was a shovel. I don't sure. I guess the ocean took it. Um, and the, the beach ball. And then let's skip to the layer with the sand. So what I've done is I've taken the photo and I've already gone ahead and I've trimmed around us. The photo itself, I used a photocopy so it was thin. So I put a piece of cardstock behind it. You can use construction paper or cardstock, just making sure that it's thick enough. It has a little bit of body. So then you go around and you cut around the edges. This is, is fastened to the layer that's with sand. So I'm going to put adhesive along I know it doesn't go all the way to the top. It just, it seems to me that it goes about to my brother's neck, roughly. So I'm going to position this right on to the sand. Remember, the placement matters. I've already figured out when this is going to sit behind here, making sure that we're going to show through when it's bowed, you know, in a position where you're going to really see everybody. So at this point, I would add another photo to the back layer so that it will show through. And all I have to do now is tap all the layers, bring all these layers together, and take, <laughs> I can see two, there's three, there's four, and then adding the brad through the top two layers. I'm not going to stop to attach it, but you can see you're going to do the same thing as I did in the very beginning. Pull those around so that you get the dimensionality. And I'll bring this back to share with you again. One, Diane, this is for you. We're getting nice and tight on that bathing cap. But this is doing a diorama so that it's themed for summer photos, just because I found these cool photos of us at Lake Crestline. I thought it would be kind of fun for you to see how easy it is to change it up just by changing the theme of the photos, the colors, and the theme of the embellishments. This, how great would this be if you have sports photos of your kids? And what I've done with this one is I've taken and I've got baseball photos and I've got a grass border and pennants is all I've used just die cuts of different pennants in order to fit the baseball theme. What's cool about this this is my friend Jake and Sam. Of course, Jake is now in college. Sam is in high school. I mean, they're much older. It's fun to go back and find your old photos. What I really like is their dad, Brian, is the coach. And he is, I have to turn this this way to see, here is Brian. But Brian's wife, Christy, found an old picture. This is Brian when he was their age. So we have two generations shown here. It's really fun to do that. You can do that and stuff with when you make them yourself. That's baseball. Here is an example that would be cool for the 4th of July. 
once again using beach photos but it's completely different this time if there's a wave border but there's um a, what looks like a waving flag in the background to kind of fit the fourth of july theme i have one here <laughs> for winter notice i've even taken little um, snowflake punches and they're hanging every so it doesn't need to be summer it can be any season here's even one for spring that is easter themed and you can see how cool that works and this one is smaller and only has three layers so you can see the possibilities they're they're really endless you know a three-dimensional display that features some of your favorite summer photos it's easy to make and it's going to look great sitting on display in your home